He said he brought us on the bottom because we did not follow him. That's the reason why these curses are, are being handed down to us now, right? That's the reason why these brothers can kill each other at phenomenal rates in our community. And don't care because we don't know who we are, we don't love each other, and God wants it that way until we acknowledge what we're doing is wrong and come back to him. Dwayne, how you doing, man? I'm the Monotone. We were Israel United in Christ. Right? What we're showing, what we're showing our people is how do we change the state of our community? You understand? Our people was in the news yesterday because of a shooting down here. Right? And what we heard is that there was some form of retaliation today that happened. So what we must, how do we stop that from going on in our community? The answer is to come back to God's laws, statutes, and commandments. You understand that? And you, brother, as a leader in our community, because you're a man, right? Our people must start seeing you as an example in that community doing the most like God's laws. You understand that? And sis, you're a leader in your home because you're the one that has to be home raising up your children and supporting that man, that righteous man. Read. And to love him. And now we must love God. How do we love God? Love each other. Love each other? You, you almost, you, you're right. Matter of fact, we're going to bring that up. Right? But what's another definition? How do I'm we love learned. God? I'm learning. How do we love each other? You see? Our people don't even know how to love or what love is. That's why we have so many broken families, broken homes, broken relationships now. Because we don't even know how to love each other. Our women don't even know how to love their children. They may think they love them. Right, but then they, they're putting, they're allowing their children to eat things that's killing them, or they allow their children to serve other gods that eventually is going to kill them as well and lead them in the wrong path. So how do we love each other? How do we love God? Give me um, first, give me Second John six first. This is how we love each other now. Read Second John verse six. And this is love. So the most like God is saying, this is love. Read that we walk. After his commandments. We must start walking after God's laws, statutes, and commandments now. You understand that? How do we love God? First John 5. First John, chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God. He's saying this is the love of God now. Read. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. And guess, guess what about God? Because what we're taught in the Christian church, that Christ died so that we no longer have to do the laws. I've heard that before. Have you heard that, bro? Have you heard that we're under grace now so we no longer have to keep the laws? But you see, and the thing is, we just told the brother, right? I'm not going to get on it, but we told the brother, what, do, what did I say his role was? What did God say that man's role was in our community? He's supposed to be a leader and a pillar in our community. And do you see the state of the black man now? Whereas you walk, you don't have time to hear it to build himself up so that our community can change with a woman right next to him. But the woman is standing here, disciplined, willing to hear. That is our people being completely destroyed. Give me Hosea 4 verse 6. And it's sad, right? And it should anger our people. It angers us up here when we see the state of the so-called black man docile, not wanting to lead his community, not wanting to lead his women or his children. Not wanting to hear who he is and to accept the fact that he is a God on this earth here and supposed to be ruling. Read that. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That is part of our destruction. And that's why I said I'm not going to bang on a brother too hard. You know why? Because he doesn't know any different. Lord's will, Lord, he comes back because we're not going to stop being out here in these streets. We're downtown, uptown, we're, we're in other states, we're all over the place. Every single day of the week. Right. So we're not going to stop. So Lord will, he sees us again. Or he runs across us like you ran across us over YouTube, right? Yeah. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. And because our people reject the knowledge of God, read. I will also reject thee. And this is why we have brothers that are homeless, strung out on drugs, talking about there is no God. Because the Most High God has rejected us now to the point where we have no spirit in us to fight, no spirit in us to work, no spirit in us to lead our community at all. No. We don't have no 
strong spirit in us. As men, read. That thou shalt be no priest to me. We should desire the office of a priest of God. Because that is the greatest office any man can ever have. Read. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Excuse me. I will also forget thy children. And the most High God now has forgotten our children. You understand that? So the thing is, you already understand this word. You believe the word. You believe the gospel. You believe in your God's chosen people? Of course I do. Sis, do you believe that the black people are guided? I know you're just getting up here, so I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to see if you, you see if you roll with us, though, right? Do you believe that the black people are special in, in the eyes of God? Why? Why do you think so? Because we're getting our asses with now, right? We, we're at the bottom now. All the way. Right. But why do you think that we're special in the eyes of God? God loves us. Right, he does love us, right? And he, right now we're being, where's that at? Um, whom the Lord loveth the chapter. Hebrews 3. Get that, because what we must understand is we're being chastised by God now. So by us having to live, check, work, check, and check, right? For us being single parents, right? Not having a stable household. Um, our children may be strung out on drugs or out there in the streets for gangbanging and all those different things. For us being homeless at times, right? Because I didn't have a place to stay all my whole life. I'm, I'm with a wife and two, three children and living in a damn extended state. I don't have a place to stay. That's, that's the state that I came out of. You understand that? But all those things, we must understand this week. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 6. Go ahead. For whom the Lord loveth. For whom the Lord loveth, what does he do? He chastened them. That's the reason why he can put us on the bottom. Right. He said he brought us on the bottom because we did not follow him. That's the reason why these curses are, are being handed down to us now, right? That's the reason why these brothers can kill each other at phenomenal rates in our community. And don't care because we don't know who we are, we don't love each other, and God wants it that way until we acknowledge what we're doing is wrong and come back to him. Read. And scourge him, every son whom he received him. Because we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. So he got to whip us. If your child doesn't do what you tell them to do, what do you do? Oh, they're going to get a whooping. They're going to get a whooping. They're going to get punished. Does it yeah. feel good? No. So how do you think the Most High can, has to govern an entire nation of people? He can't be light on everybody. Everybody probably wasn't wicked like that. Right? But everybody was part of that nation and we all took part of that chastity. You understand that? That's how the most I got to deal. That's why slave ships had to happen. That's why the rape, robbery, and murdering of our mothers and daughters had to happen. That's why our men had to be put to death and put to the bottom of the Our men are underneath our daughters today. Oh, yeah. They're not, I mean, they, the black man ain't worth nothing. If you have a black man in your house, you, you can't even get government assistance. It doesn't right. He's, an, he's, he's actually something that's against it. What you're trying to do as a black woman. So why would you want a black man? Exactly. Exactly. That's a bad thing, sis. But the, what we're showing our people is we got to change. Right? We got to come back because first John 5 and 3 again, it says God's laws are not grievous. Right? Now we have three women out here. What, what laws do you think you can start? You know the Ten Commandments? You know the commandments? What's the first commandment? Well, let's get any commandment. Thou shalt not kill, steal, lie, uh, commit adultery, all those different things, right? And what else? Um, uh, what? Bear false witness. Bear false witness, all those things, right? Don't uh, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Huh? Our people don't even keep the Sabbath day holy. Because what day is the Sabbath day, sister? The Sabbath day, I think that's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday, but what day do we go to church in our community? We go to church on Sunday, right? So that's wrong, isn't it? That's wrong, right? What about God's dress code? You think God has a dress code for our people? Like he tells men what to wear, women what to wear, um, priests what to wear, just in general? You think God has a dress code? Yes, he does. He does? No, I, I, I believe, I mean, we go to church just as you are. Come dress as you are. What about you, sir? As we are. Was the church always like that, though? No, it wasn't. Hell no. no but I know when I was growing up, you couldn't come to the church with blue jeans on as a, as a dude. You had to be dressed some, some, well, you had to wear some kind of slack. Come as you are, it's relatively new, right? But 
Does God care how you dress as women now? Because how do our women dress in society? They think dress, of, how, how do they dress? They like dress like street walkers like now, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. They dress like prostitutes. Like prostitutes. Yeah, hey, yeah, that's heavy yeah, that y'all are saying that. And it's yeah, good that we have sisters out here talking that because you know what? Because God is against that thing. You understand that? Give me, give me, give me, give me through the right me 22 real quick. Everything hey, shows. Hey, what, so what is your husband? Hey, what, what does that leave your husband? Your husband's not even special enough to I you to man, save that for him. I'm a, I'm a single woman. You're a single woman. What you need to be, you need a desire to be married to a righteous man, though. Right? You, you, you had your experience, right? And he was unrighteous. He was walking around, beating the streets, sleeping with every woman that he could find, right? No good nigga. What about you, sis? Were you married? Oh, no. But you had, you had, uh, you had boyfriend, man before, right? And, and, and that's the experience that we have in our community. So let's deal with this real quick. Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22 of verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abominations unto the Lord thy God. Right, so God has a dress code. He's telling you the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto the man. And a man should not put on a woman's garment, right? So what are they trying to push men to wear now? Dresses. Our men are wearing dresses and skirts and things now. Skirts. Tight shirts. Tight shirts and I hear it. Say the nail. When I come to the prison, they come to prison. They go to prison. Exactly. They go to prison. They, they, they sag their pants because them dudes after they're behind in prison. But now, read that first part again, though. The woman uh -huh. shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So what is that talking about? What do women wear that, that, that was made for men? Pants. Pants, shorts. That's heavy. But so now, you got on shorts. You got on pants. You got on pants too, sis. Right? right? So the thing is, how does God feel about our women wearing pants? That was in the Old Testament. Nothing, yeah. Nothing there. Stay right there. Stay. He's going to tell you. I'm going to show you what he said. Read it again from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. That's established that it's talking about pants, shorts, trousers, breeches, things of that nature, right? Me. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. A man is not supposed to be wearing his wife's bra and playing around cross-dressing with his wife. None of those things. Your, your son should not be wearing his mother's high heels running around the house. None of those things. Because why? Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. God says that's an abomination unto him. And God said, so right now, how do you think God is looking down on all of our women that are wearing just, just pants in general right now? How does God feel about that? He's unpleased. He's, it's abominable. Get that in Jeremiah chapter 44. The most I hate that thing. You agree, sis? The most, the most I hate that thing. Yes, I do. I got more dresses than I do pants. Jeremiah 44 and 4. 44 and 4. 44 4. 4. Jeremiah chapter 44 and verse 4. This is how God now, so this is how the most God feels about people looking abominable in his eyes. Read. How be it? I send unto you all my servants. The, all of his servants. Because the most high servants are you so called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are the servants of God. You were born to do God's service on this earth here. And be that example. Read. The prophets uh -huh. rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing. That's what we're out here doing. We're out here telling our people, don't do this abominable thing. Read. That I hate. That God what? That I hate. That's the most like God hates. He hates abomination. So our job is to come out here. We show you who you are. You're not black. You're not African American. You're not Native American. You're God. So you're Israelites according to the Bible. That's your nationality. And now we must show you that the most high God is looking down on us. And he hates the way he sees our people. Right? He hates to see our women in pants. Why? Because you're royalty. You understand that? When you get married, what do you wear? You wear a dress, right? When you, the girls go to proms, what do they wear? They wear prom. Why? Because they want to feel like a woman. That's the most glorious time of their life. The most high God has created you to feel that way every single day of your life. You understand that? You are created to feel that way. So you should feel the same way about those pants and those shorts that you have on now, the way God feels. Because you don't want to be that way. You understand that? Give me two or nine. Should it be two or nine? Also, modesty. Right? 
Because our women wear tight pants that reveal anything. We talked about that earlier, right? How you doing, bro? We're going over the dress code of God, right? The we. First Timothy chapter two and verse nine. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So now God says that women are supposed to dress modestly. So even though, like, since you have a dress on, right? But you have your cleavage out. That's not modest, right? So you got to follow the whole dress code of God, meaning no pants. And guess what? Okay, I'm I'm, I'm wearing I'm not wearing pants. I'm wearing a dress. I'm not supposed to see your curves. It can't be a tight dress. It can't be a short dress. It can't be a revealing dress with your chest out. You understand that? Why? Because that causes man like what's your name, bro? Um, Frank. Frank. I'm gonna say something to you. Yeah, I got you, Frank. Not right now, though. Not right now. But that causes brothers that when they see those things, the first thing a man will look at is your behind because you, you know our women, our women have that. Right, our women have that, right? It, it just is what it is. I, I grew up with two older sisters, and when they became a certain age, my mother used to tell them, hey man, put some damn clothes on, you got all that stuff moving around in the house. Because you got a little brother, right? That's just, that's how my mother talked to my sisters. And that's how you told your daughters, right? You got too much stuff moving around in this damn house here. And now our women got all that stuff moving around the streets, and what do you think these men are doing? Like damn puppy dogs going crazy over that thing, right? Lips to the floor. And our women want that though. Our women want that. So we got to, our women have to cover. Read that again. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So you should, your, your dresses should be modest, right? Read. With shame faceless. Also with shame faceless, meaning you're not talking back to it. It should be a shame for a woman to look at another man and tell him, hey, now get out my face like that. Or with an attitude, because that means you have no reverence or respect for that man. You feel like you're equal to that man. You're able to speak to a grown man of God any way you want to. With no repercussion, no consequence. That's not your role, sister. You understand? The same face as me is a level of humility, right? A level of humbleness in reverence to you, Frank. Our men don't have that respect now because we're not walking in the order of God. Right? And our sisters don't know who they are or who we are, so that's all that stuff is the beginning and that's, that's really the root cause of the dysfunction that you see in our communities. Because there wouldn't be no little gangbangers out there if our men move right and our sisters move right, they got married and the women knew their role and men knew their role, and guess what happens with them kids? Them kids grow up to be upstanding citizens that love their nation, love their people, love their God. You understand that? So all this stuff matters. Read. And sobriety. And sobriety. Not drinking Frank and getting drunk all day. And sisters not being drunk and high, popping pills, going to the club, none of those things. I know you get off work, you want to get a little taste. You can get a little taste, right? But you can't be sloppy drunk like that. You understand, Reed? Not with broided hair, uh -huh. or gold, or pearl, or costly array. Right. But with becoming women, professing godliness. Our women must start professing godliness. And the way they dress and conduct themselves is how they profess godliness, right? So you think when God, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna go down the line, you three. So when you when God looks at you, knowing what God's laws is, if God was to come down and look at you right now, would he say that right now, sis, you're professing godliness by the way you dress? I'm doing what? That you're professing godliness by the way that you're dressed right now. But God says that short pants is abominable. Yes, it is. So that's not God. Okay, no, that's not God. Right? I misunderstood. So would you say yes or no? And I'm seeing where your spirit is because there's, okay. there's a level of humility that our people must have in order to repent and in order to start changing their minds and their lives and to become godly, right? So I'm going to ask you one. If God were to look down on you now, remember the laws, right? Women are not supposed to wear pants, shorts, or anything tight. Are you dressed in a godly manner right now? All praises. Well, now you, sis. No. When you have your chest out, right? No. Are you dressed in a godly manner right now? No. Sis, you got on pants and you know what I mean? Are you dressed in a godly manner right now? Guess what the most high God can do with you all? The most high can work with you now. And the most high can deal with you and you can become that because guess what? You are humble. You've humbled yourself. Give me that in um, John 3 or Matthew 18. Which one says come as a child? Matthew 18. I think they both said. John 3. Get John 3 and 3. So guess what? That's what we all had to do. We all had to come to realizations as men that I'm not a man. 
I wasn't a good husband. I wasn't a good father when I was coming up, having my kids be in this way and dealing with their mother that way and all those different things. Right? Those are things we have to have realization with. You know what I mean? We had to deal with that. I hate my brothers because you want to fight them and you want to go to war with them and, and sell drugs to your people and do all those different things. As men, you got to understand that. I hated God because I celebrated Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, all those different things that the Most High God is against. You have to be able to admit that in order to change and become godly. That is called repentance. The problem with our people is we got pride on us and we don't want to admit that we are. Oh, if we think we are, we want to be accepted for being all. No, we got to do this. Read. John chapter 3, verse 3. Go ahead. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. So the Bible is saying except a man, or in our case a man or woman, be born again. Our job is to be, Christ died so that we can be born again now. Because guess what? If Christ didn't put his life on the line, we all would be put to death right now by the Most High God. We all are worthy of death. We're not worthy of the grace that Christ gave to us by sacrificing his life. Read. He cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Read on. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter, excuse me, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus asked, Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now we're saying, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You like that, Frank, but you don't believe in the Old Testament, so we're not playing with you, right? So it says, born of the water and the spirit, what does that mean? Born again, right? Guess what? We, we showed you that water today. We, we've actually baptized you in that water today. How? We've showed you some laws that you must keep and how God deals with it, right? That's how he baptized. Get a piece of spot. So that's what's going on now. You're actually being baptized right now without being dunked in a pool of water or nothing. You're getting this right here. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Sanctify and cleanse it, meaning baptize him, cleanse him with what? With the washing of water. With the washing of water by what? By the word. By what? By the word. The word of God now cleanses your mind. Because now you know, oh, damn, I can't wear pants no more. I believe that I've been doing wrong. My mind has been cleansed and I've changed that. I got to start dressing modestly. I got to get out the Christian church and the Christian doctors, right? Our people got a lot of problems, right? But we, how do we fix that now? So what do we do? Repentance. No, they're not gonna, they're gonna let, me show you, let me show you the judgment for our women wearing pants. Definitely one. Because it's a big deal. It's a big deal to us. You know why? Because we don't want to see our women die. We don't want to see our brothers die for not humbling themselves down to the word of God. We all know that there's issues in our community. We all know that there's things that we're doing wrong, but none of us want to change. That makes absolutely no sense. Because if your car breaks down, you want to fix it, right? And so what? If your tire goes, what do you got to do? You got to change the tire so that the tire can work. Guess what? Our community is not working. Our households are not working. Guess what we got to do? We got to change our households and we fix it by the word of God. That's right. We got to do that thing. Read. Zephaniah. You got And we also have to change our ways. Exactly. We definitely got to change our ways. Read. Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. There's a punishment for wearing the clothes outside of God's dress code. Our people don't understand that. But there is a punishment. You will be put to death if you're not dressed according to how God wants you to dress. You understand that? You understand that? You have a Christ. Christ, Christ, Christ. Give me Matthew 4 verse 4. Real quick. People do what they want to do. Let me show you something because we, we see, we hear about the laws of Moses was done away with, right? The laws of Moses is never done away with. You understand that? No, but what happens is our people go away from that. So I'm going to ask y'all a question there because that's the Old Testament is what he say, right? And we run away from it. What? When Christ was tempted of the devil when he, when, he, when he went up to be tempted, when he was fasting 40 days. Right? Read that. Read verse 3. Matthew chapter 4 verse 3. 
And when the tempter came to him, uh -huh. he said, if thou be the son of God. He said, if you be the son of God, do what? Command that these stones be made bread. Turn these stones into bread. Because he was fasting for he was hungry. So the tempter came and said, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread, right? What did Christ say? Read. But he answered and said. Christ answered the tempter now and said this. It is written. He said, it is written. Written. Christ said, it is written. Written where? Because a lot of times our people think that Christ came down here and taught some brand new doctrine. Christ said, it is written. Written where? Bring it out. It is written that thou shalt not tempt But where is it written? In the Old Testament, in the Bible, he did not change it. His doctrine ain't no different. Read it. It said it is written. Now watch what he said. Read Man shall not live by bread alone, but, by what? but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. By every word that proceeds out of this Old Testament and the New Testament now. Christ brought forth the new covenant, which actually enables us to not be put to death for some of the sins that we have committed. You understand that? Having sex out of wedlock, guess what? If you're not married and you commit adultery, what happens? What was the, what was the, what was the, uh, the judgment? And, and Hell. You get put to death. Well, hell, hell, you get put to hell. death. If that woman okay. was found not a virgin oh, yeah. on her yeah, wedding yeah. day, she got yeah. put to yeah. death. Yeah. Yeah. Christ did away with that so that we can now live and change our ways. Yes. You understand that? So that's we got to start living out of the word of God now. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. And finally, my brother, be strong.